Hey everyone, in this video we're going to take a look at this 2021 Honda Odyssey. Uh, the Odyssey was last redesigned for the 2018 model year and it hasn't really changed much since. It's available exclusively with a V6 engine. It makes 280 horsepower. It sends that power exclusively to the front wheels via a 10-speed automatic transmission. Uh, the Odyssey remains one of just four minivans left on the market and it takes a relatively simple approach when you compare it to its competition. Uh, the new Toyota Sienna comes exclusively as a hybrid, returns really impressive fuel economy, and it can be optioned with all-wheel drive. Uh, the Chrysler Pacifica can be optioned with all-wheel drive if you get it as a V6, and then there's also a plug-in hybrid model that is offered exclusively with front-wheel drive. And then there's the new Kia Carnival, which, like the Odyssey, comes with just a V6 engine and basic front-wheel drive, but it takes a more upscale approach to the minivan, especially in its higher trim levels. Either way, though, the Odyssey is plenty competent. It remains one of the most appealing family vehicles on the market. So without further ado, let's take a tour inside and out and then take it for a drive. So it's a really ugly day here, apologies for the weather, but luckily the focus on the Odyssey isn't really the outside of the vehicle. It's pretty conservatively styled. I do like these headlights. They look really futuristic. Uh, you've got a black grill, black surrounds for the fog lights there. Moving down the side, it's got this kink at the back of the back door here at the C-pillar. That's a design element that's carried over from previous generations of the Odyssey. And then it's got this floating look to the roof line. That's another common design element throughout the industry today. You've got Odyssey right here. There's your Honda logo. And then this is a top spec Elite trim. So you've got an Elite badge right there. So it's got a kick to open rear hatch. Now that we're in the back, uh, you can see that the third row is folded flat. Uh, first off, I think this is broken. It looks like there's a steel cable that's supposed to pull this down when the seat is in its down position, kind of like this one is here. So uh, we'll just have to ignore that. That would be fixed under warranty. Anyway, though, you can see the cargo room with the third row folded. It's pretty easy to fold it down. Uh, before we do that, though, we'll take a look at some things. You've got a 12 volt power outlet there and Another one right here, a little bit of storage there. And then you've got the Odyssey's party trick. That is the Honda Vac. Keep in mind, this is a 2021 Odyssey, uh, but fold this down and yeah, there's a vacuum back there. So I thought we would put the third row in place. Pretty easy to do. And that's because I noticed there was some dirt here that will allow us to demonstrate the vacuum. So the car has to be turned on. The engine doesn't have to be running. Just the accessories have to be turned on. So I'm gonna turn it on without my foot on the brake. I don't know how well you can see it, but it looks like someone used this vehicle to transport grass clippings. Um, I actually went through the interior and vacuumed everything up that was ahead of this area with this vacuum. And it's actually, it's actually pretty good. So we'll turn it on, here's the button. You can see suction's, suction's pretty good. Uh, but we'll just go see all that. This thing works really well. I wouldn't call it compromised at all. It's not like, oh, well, it's a vacuum that's built into a car, so it's not as good. No, this thing is as good as your everyday wet dry vac that you might use in your garage. Let's stuff this thing back in here. So there's a fair amount of storage space back in there for the hose. Hard to do one-handed. But 
there we go. So the interesting story at the moment with this vacuum though, is that it was supplied to Honda by ShopVac. ShopVac is a brand uh, kind of like Xerox and Kleenex. We tend to call all of these ShopVacs, but ShopVac is actually a company. But ShopVac, the company went out of business in September of 2020. So Honda was suddenly left without a supplier for this vacuum. Uh, so what they did is basically rushed the 2022 Odyssey to market so that they could build it without the vacuum. And um, that speaks more to the complications that come with changing a vehicle halfway through its model year. So they really just brought the 2022 out so that they could make that change uh, because they weren't going to be able to get any more of these vacuums. Um, ShopVac was looking for a buyer. They couldn't find one, which is why they went out of business. But then I read that they just found a buyer and that they're going to be back up and running soon if they're not already. So I have to think this vacuum will come back to the Odyssey. Um, it would be a shame if we had to wait all the way to the 2023 model year because this is a really awesome feature. Uh, and I have to think as soon as Honda can get its hands on more vacuums, uh, they'll do that and they'll bring it back to the Odyssey. I just don't know if that can happen before the 2023 model year now that they've made this change for 2022. Anyway, um, long story short, hoping to see the vacuum back in the Odyssey soon because this is a really awesome feature. Before we go here, I'll show how to put the third row seat away. This one's broken, it's not really working right, but here you pull on this and then it says, pull strap to unlock seat and continue pulling firmly to stow. You kind of have to yank it, I think. There we go. So uh, the Sienna and Pacifica are much, much nicer to operate than this third row. Anyway, though, uh, we, we got it, kind of. Took me like seven tries. All right, so the car is already on because we turned it on to use the vacuum, so I'm gonna go start it. Here's a look at the window sticker. So this is a 2021 Honda Odyssey Elite as equipped. This one comes in at $49,335, so just shy of 50K. The EPA rates this thing at 19 city, 28 highway, 22 combined. That's fine, uh, not quite competitive with the new Sienna, but I guess this thing makes up for it elsewhere. Uh, this one's fully loaded, so it is an elite model. This is about as much as you could ever pay for an Odyssey. As for the interior, it's pretty functional. Uh, many black surfaces throughout. This is kind of a squishy material right here. Piano black, then this is either real leather or imitation leather. It's got some stitching in it there. Switch gear all feels pretty good. Lots of storage on the door panel, similar to what you get in the Pilot, Passport, and Ridgeline. There are three tiers of storage here. So bottom tier, middle tier, and then top tier. That's nice, very functional. Power door controls for the rear sliding doors, button to open the rear hatch, and then some active safety stuff there. Parking brake is right here. Here's your steering wheel. So you do get paddle shifters for this 10-speed automatic transmission. Not exactly looking for paddle shifters in a minivan, but they are nice at times. Nice big screen in the gauge cluster, so mechanical for your temperature there, and then mechanical gauge for your fuel gauge, but then this is a screen with tachometer, speedometer, and then trip computer and other information there. Infotainment screen is fine, I guess. Uh, it's relatively small given the competition. It is high resolution. It's a touch screen, so that's good. Um, Everything within here is pretty easy to use. The drawbacks though, are that there's no tuner knob. Uh, Honda actually introduced this unit a number of years ago without a volume knob and people hated that so much that they retroactively added a volume knob back in. It used to be a rocker switch and you can see where it used to be and you had to tap, 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 tap to go up, tap, 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 tap to go down, unnecessarily complicated. So luckily they've added that volume knob back in. Uh, the HVAC stuff is a little bit frustrating to change the direction of the air where it comes out from. You have to actually press uh, front climate and then do it through the infotainment system. That's frustrating. I do not like that setup. There should always be hard buttons for everything for the HVAC system. You should not have to go through the infotainment. So uh, hopefully we'll see Honda change that in future generations. Here's your gear selection right here. So this is Honda's button system. Every modern Honda uses this. So you've got park, 
for reverse, you pull back on that. For neutral, press that. And then for drive, press that button. So put it back into park. Uh, I don't mind this system and it's really nice to not have a big gear lever sticking out of the center console. It saves a lot of space. Heated and ventilated seats, uh, different drive modes. Center console is functional. There's a wireless charging pad, two cup holders, storage box with an aux port and a USB-A port. It's a little bit behind the curve. It would be nice to see USB-C. Then there's a USB-A and then an AC inverter there and then another 12 volt outlet right there. Door is open in a really weird way. I don't know why they don't fold up seems like these are liable to get busted off in that position. Here's a slot for the Blu-ray player for the rear entertainment system. And uh, yes, yeah, speaking of the rear, I think we've covered the front. Let's check out the second and third rows. Power sliding doors. Keep in mind, this is the fully loaded Elite model. Climbing in the rear. Power closed doors as well. There's plenty of room back here, so plenty of knee room, nice flat floor, so you can sprawl out. There is an HDMI port and two USB-A ports there. Another thing I noticed, you get two seat back pockets per seat. So in here we've got the headphones for this entertainment system, keep the kids occupied, and then remote and headphones, and then also on the passenger seat, two pockets. Captain's chairs here have nice armrests. They fold down and they're pretty sturdy. At least, well, I take that back. But still, they fold down. Interesting functionality right here. I'll demonstrate it now. So we'll open the door. And these second row captain's chairs can actually be slid together to make a small bench and for offering access to the third row. So to do that, you grab this and there's, there's a lever right there. Pull up and then slide it over and there's your access to the third row so we will climb back here now my nemesis this third row put that in place and yeah decent amount of room back here second row can also slide forward so we'll slide it forward a little bit give a little more leg room back here and with that i've got plenty of space there are even pockets on the second row seat backs as well and then back here headphone port volume, USB-A port, and then all four of the passenger area windows actually have sunshades as well. So you can block out a lot of sun back here. Uh, yeah, you'll just have to trust me. You can see there's one over there, over there. Uh, I should mention there's also an air vent for the outboard seats. And then over here, you get a 12 volt outlet instead of a USB-A port like you get there. Driving the Odyssey. There's not a whole lot to note about the driving experience here, I'm gonna be honest. There's 50, so acceleration is relatively smooth. Uh, it's not fast, it's not slow. Can't imagine anybody would complain about the performance from this engine. Um, I've seen 22 miles per gallon over 123 miles. So that's right on par with the EPA's estimated combined rating, which I'm somewhat proud of that. I generally get significantly below the EPA estimate. Uh, I found in a few different Honda products now though, uh, I've gotten slightly better fuel economy than I would expect. Anyway, this Honda V6 is a pretty good engine uh, with regard to power and fuel economy. Put it into sport mode. A lot of wheel slippage there. Yeah, there's 50 miles per hour. Uh, the roads are wet, so. Powertrain offerings aren't fancy in the Odyssey. Uh, kind of stands out for that reason now, given that both the Sienna and the Pacifica offer some kind of fuel efficient alternative to a regular V6. Additionally, this vehicle is only front wheel drive, but if you get over those things, if you don't need all wheel drive, and if you don't want 
a hybrid or a plug-in hybrid. I can't imagine why anybody wouldn't want the Sienna hybrid because I can't remember what it gets off the top of my head, but it's really impressive fuel economy. But if you're okay with a regular V6, let's put it that way, and you don't need all wheel drive, I think the Odyssey remains relatively competitive. Plenty of family friendly features. I know I didn't touch on all of them, but there is a mirror right here in what would normally be the sunglass holder. In fact, okay, so will hold sunglasses and it's a mirror. That's cool. And then there is a cabin watch system where you can keep an eye on the kids. There's a little camera back there in the same housing for the entertainment system. And there's also a cabin talk feature where you can push a button and it's kind of like an intercom. So between the mirror, the camera, the intercom, the vacuum, the sliding second row captain's chairs that can be slid together to make more room. Uh, this thing has plenty of family friendly features. There's also sunshades for all of the rear windows. Coming up on our speed bumps here. First one is at 25. Not bad. Second one we'll do at 30. Smooth. Okay, this one we will go 26. Yeah, a little bit of movement out of the third row, I think. There's a look at the 2021 Honda Odyssey. Uh, this thing is packed with family-friendly features. Um, plenty of ways to communicate with kids in the back seat. Lots of configurability. That vacuum is awesome, even though it's kind of going away for 2022, at least maybe temporarily. So from a family-friendly standpoint, this thing is pretty impressive. That said, I do think it's starting to feel a little bit dated from a powertrain standpoint. Uh, the Odyssey's biggest competitor is the Toyota Sienna, and that vehicle is all new for 2021. It's sold exclusively as a hybrid, and I just checked, it is rated at 36 miles per gallon all around, and it's also available with all-wheel drive, so that really gives it a leg up. When you factor in that the Sienna returns 36 combined with front-wheel drive, whereas the Odyssey only returns 22 combined with all-wheel drive, and you really don't sacrifice much with the Sienna's hybrid powertrain in terms of performance, I think that makes the Odyssey a little bit of a tough sell. I know Honda will be able to compete on price. They'll be able to discount these a little bit to make up for that discrepancy when it comes to the Sienna's efficiency, but um, I do think this vehicle will benefit from an update in the next year or so. I'm not sure that would involve any changes to the powertrain. It typically doesn't, but I do think Honda should look to innovate when it comes to the Odyssey's powertrain down the line, given that people movers are getting more and more efficient with each new generation and uh, the Odyssey needs to change a little bit in order to keep up with that. And I think that wraps up the 2021 Odyssey Elite here. Thanks for watching.